Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. Yes, so Rap- Rapid Nui. So, yeah, after the success of Robin Hood, you went, what attracted you to that story? Because that's such, and it was so beautiful, and it's such a, I've never even heard of that story. It was such a great well, nobody, story. Nobody had, and, and that, that was what attracted me to it, was just, I'd done some reading about Easter Island, and, you know, what happened there so long ago, and, and from what they understand, you know, they think that Polynesians landed there about the 5th century A.D., and they think they were probably Marquesas. They were fleeing political strife there. And they came, probably a couple dozen people landed there. And they were led by a guy named Hotu Matua. And over the centuries, they populated the island. And um, it's the most isolated island in, on the face of the earth. Populated island. It's 2,300 miles west of Chile, 1,500 miles east of Pitcairn Island. And they lived there, you know, for centuries without any contact that we know of from anywhere else. So I was fascinated by the fact that what they know is that it wasn't even discovered again until 1722 by a Dutch navigator on Easter Sunday. And that's where the name came from, Easter Island. But what they found at the time was it's just a barren place, no trees and all these toppled statues and these people living in caves in the ground, just almost like animals. Um and I'm like, how did that happen? You know, nobody could understand. But what they what they came to realize historically from the oral history was these descendants of Hotumatua populated the island. They divided ultimately into two different clans, the long ears who were kind of nobility and the short ears who were the commoners. And uh, they basically degraded the island environmentally. They cut all the trees down. They overfished it. Um they overpopulated it. They think at one time there were 20,000 people on this little eight by 11 mile island. Oh, wow. And they ultimately fell into interscene warfare. And, you know, the short ears killed most of the long ears. And there's this one guy named Aronia who's supposed to be the descendant of the long ears who survived. And uh, they had this huge statue building cult. Nobody could understand really why did they build them so big. There were statue buildings throughout Polynesia, but nobody could understand why they did them so big there. Um, but they cut down all these trees and and cut all these statues out of these craters and rolled them around the island and erected them. There are hundreds of them. Mm-hmm. Each little community, they're called Moai. So my story, what I wanted to do was try to explore why did they do this? And what is it about human beings that no matter where we are on the planet, there's something inherent in us that makes us destroy ourselves environmentally. Right. You take this isolated group of humanity without any outside influence, and they did it to themselves. So that's kind of what I wanted to explore in the story. Um, You know, and coming off of Robin Hood and being hot and thinking I could do anything and, you know, I could overcome any obstacle, (laughs) I decided, oh. We'll go to Easter Island and shoot this. It's the hardest movie I ever made. Wait a minute. Was Rapa Nui is the hardest movie you ever made? Yeah. That's in your filmography, sir. That is a statement and a half. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I was because I saw it. I was like, I wonder if they shot this. I mean, it looks like they shot this on Easter Island. And I'm like, you, you, you were crazy enough to go shoot this on Easter Island. Yeah, we were. There's so many stories. I won't bore you with it, but it was just, it was nuts. It was, it was insane. And, and, uh, but it's beautiful. And it, it has that, that, that Kevin Reynolds kind of style to it, um, that you, you carry throughout your filmography. Um, and I think it's, and I remember it coming out and it did, I mean, obviously it was, it, it didn't do well. If I, if I mean, yeah. <laughs> it bombed. It nothing. It didn't do, it, it was, it wasn't as, success, as successful as Robin Hood. That's a fair statement. Yes. That's- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it just like was it was it because of lack lack of um, you know because you didn't have any major stars and I mean Jason uh, Jason Jason Scott Lee was just off of um, uh, Dragon right it was before Dragon yeah and Eastside Morales and yeah. yeah it was a you know a cast of relative unknowns but I mean you know we had to do it that way to try to cast people that look like Rapanuians uh, right and 
another part of the problem is the vast majority of the public has no idea what happened on Easter Island. I mean, we would show it at screenings and people would ask, well, where is this place? And like, yeah. what, what century was this? And, you know, they had no concept of what we were trying to portray. It could have been on Mars for all they knew. They didn't, they just didn't grasp it at all. Then I don't think, I think in a lot of ways the picture just simply didn't work. You know, it didn't translate from, from screenplay to screen the way I'd hoped it would. Um, it's the most, in some ways I think it was the Island itself because that's the most haunted place I've ever been to. Really? It, yeah. It's almost like the Island didn't want us to tell the story. It was, <laughs> I, I know it sounds ridiculous. No, no, was, I get you. I get you. It's a creepy place. I mean, God knows what happened in that island. I mean, God knows what kind of, I mean. Of things, a lot of bad things. A lot of really bad. You can just feel there's a malevolence there that I've never felt anywhere else. And <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I, I actually, when I went to New York the uh, last year, as if I hadn't been to New York in probably a decade, I went to, to uh, Ground Zero. And when I w literally walking onto Ground Zero, you could just feel. I mean, I mean, I don't want to get hokey, hokey pokey on everybody here, but you felt you felt something. There's definitely a heaviness there. So I could imagine that's kind of like it's the only thing I can equate it to. Well, you have to you have to realize these people were isolated. <clears throat> they had no concept about what was out there. To me, it was like our concept about where we are in space because. Mm -hmm. They had to wonder what's out there. They've been so isolated for hundreds of years. They had no idea what was in the rest of the world. You know, and so they, they conjured up these notions themselves and this religion that they had. And I remember one day there was a guy who was a, uh, had worked with Jacques Cousteau and he, he lived there on the island. He'd married a Rapa Nui girl. And one day he was taking me around on a tour. We went up to one end of it called the Poiki Peninsula. And the whole place is like an open archeological site. But we, uh, <clears throat> We just pulled off the road near where we'd been shooting recently. And he said, come here, I want to show you something. We walk over and he just lifts this rock off the ground. And there's a hole about this big. And he says, come on. So he gets a lamp and we just crawled down in this hole, probably about 15 feet down. And I'm like, where are we going? And it's just so tight. And finally we get down there to the bottom and crawl into this chamber that opens up and he shines this light. And there are 20 human skeletons in there. And it's like this family place where people had buried their dead, you know, for centuries. Wow. And he knew, and the Islanders knew it was there, but you're not even aware that it's like everywhere. And Because there's nowhere else to go. Like you're not shipping this off somewhere. Nowhere else to go. And um, I remember the first time I went, I mean, well before shooting, a couple of years before, just explore the place and there were no rules and you could just walk all over it. I mean, there was, you'd walk up to the Ahu, which are the platforms that the Moai sat on and you'd look down inside and there'd be human bones and stuff. And there are no paved roads. So we hired a Jeep and we're driving around <laughs> when we hired the Jeep, you know, from the guy and, uh, and, and he says, when are you going to bring it back? And I go tomorrow. And he goes, okay, we'll just park it there and, and leave the keys in it. And I'm like, well, what if somebody steals it? And he goes, where are they going to take it? <laughs> Like it's good point. <laughs> what is it? Eight miles by 10 miles? Exactly. And so, <laughs> That's hilarious. So we, yeah. So we, uh, we're driving around the island off road, come to this amazing Ahu, look inside and it's just, it's stunning. You could walk up and there are all these human bones and being the asshole that I was, I took this little piece of bone. Oh, no. yeah. And it's like driving the, around the island. It's like the Brady. It's like the Brady Bunch. It's like the Brady Bunch. It's like the Brady Bunch episode when they took the, the totem and now all the bad luck starts happening. To them. The next, and we get over to the other side of the island later that day and we come over this rise and it's, you know, it's like windy and stuff. We're the only people there. There's nobody around us. And we come over and we're trying to get to this other giant Ahu. And, and you know, it's amazing. But as soon as we come over this hill and down the hill, everything goes still. There's no sound. All the insects stop. The wind stops. You can see the ocean, and it's like a mill pond. It's completely calm. It's just, like, creepy. And we get out, and we're walking around, and I'm looking around this Ahu, and out the corner of my eye, I look up, and I see something 
like a figure or something dropped down behind this ahu. And I'm like, what was that? And I walk around behind it, and there's nothing there. Was it a dog? What was it? But this chill just went up my spine. So I said, my buddy that I'm with, my, my agent, Mike, and I said, let's get out of here. So we get back in the Jeep, and we drive away. And as we go back over the hill, all the sound starts again. The wind comes up. The insects start. Wow. We get back to town in this little place that we're staying that night the hotel you know it's after dinner we're talking to the lady that runs the place and describing our day and i tell her about this you know what had happened and she goes when i finished did you take anything did you take anything i said yeah and she goes put it back and she explained to me that every month they would get packages from all over the world sent by people who'd taken things that said, I took this rock or I took this bone. And ever since I did, terrible things have been happening to me. And I know it's because I took this. And the Polynesians had this thing called mana, which is this power that exists in things. And they believe in it. And I thought it was just BS. And this is why I'm telling you, it's the most haunted place I've ever been to. So, so, yeah, I put it back. So it was literally the Brady Bunch episode when they took the totem. <laughs> I've never seen that, but I, I, I it must be. Yeah, yeah, they had, it was a, in Hawaii, it was Hawaii. They took a totem and and then they start all this bad stuff started happening to them. Right. Wow. I'd heard of stories like that um, in, in Hawaii, even like you take a, a rock and you anger the, the Hawaiian Mom, gods. Yeah. Mom there too. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, wow, I'm glad I didn't take any rocks when I was in Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> to watch the rest of this interview, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com.